Hey, everybody. Um, just to do a little intro on myself, because I haven't met most of you, I think now, maybe about half this week. Uh, my name is David Justice. I started contracting in November with Browsers and Platforms team. Uh, it brought me on initially just to try and convert the IPFS companion extension to be compatible with Manifest V3. I'm going to explain what those things are and kind of like where we're going from here on out. Um, being that I started that in November and I'm doing a talk on it now, you can see that we've maybe gone some different directions and it's complicated. So, uh, To start out, what is IPFS Companion? It's a browser extension that's intended to simplify accessing IPFS resources on the web. So until we get actual like full buy-in on all these browsers, we're going to have to do something to allow you to access some of this stuff on your local node. So, one of the main, like Lytle has done like all the work on this and has like tons and tons of features jam packed in there, but so he might have some differences of opinion of how I describe some of this, but the simplest way I can say is like, and like the most important feature to me is that if you go and you try and access like a gateway and you have it turned on, it'll go ahead and take that CID, pass it to Kuba or whatever you're running, like if you have a local node in Brave and then bring you back and navigate it to your actual, you're viewing it on your local node. Um, and then there's like a bunch of other like little features added in. You can um, see different things go, let's see, I have another slide here, yeah. Um, you can toggle between like local and gateway. Sometimes you wanna always have the gateway for certain types of domains. Um, sometimes you prefer local, you can toggle that. You can toggle it like overall. Um, you can get insights into your local node like without actually digging into like web desktop or anything like that, um, or IPFS desktop or anything like that. You can see like peer counts, things like that. Uh, you can pin resources to your local node, and then there's a drag and drop interface for adding files, and there was a right click to add to IPFS. All useful stuff, um, but we might be going a different direction with our new restrictions. So let's describe what Manifest V3 is. Manifest V3 is the newest version uh, spec for web extensions. So basically what they're trying to do is make it more secure, have more privacy and more performance is what they're they're stating. Now, there's it's been pretty controversial. There's like many, many articles you can read online, which I won't get too deep into, of um, why that like may or not be true for the users. The main thing um, that it's caused problems for is a lot of the ad blocking and like tracking protection um, apps. And we'll get into some of the features of why. So this is like a non-exhaustive summary of some of these changes in Manifest V3. The main things, uh, the main two things that are affecting me and a lot of the other people is the background pages are switched to service workers. And the, the biggest one for us is that blocking web requests has been replaced with declarative net requests. So what that actually looks like is that um, blocking net request, like blocking web requests, we used to be able to intercept web requests make some changes, update the URL, and redirect someone like immediately. Now we cannot do that. Um, what we have to do now is we get the request and we'll kind of like store it for a second. And I'll set like a, um, a request off in the background so to actually go to Kuba, get the correct mappings, the CID, all that stuff, and then update it in our declarative net request record. So the next time the user goes to navigate to that URL, it will update for them, which is, Honestly, like not that bad of a UI. It's very similar to how Brave is working right now. Um, we also like provide on once that's loaded in the background, you can go ahead and click to like refresh and go to that page. Um, so I actually like that because I've had plenty of like times working with Companion where I'm not totally sure when it's going to redirect and not. So could be seen as an improvement. That's one of our workarounds. Um, so there's a big issue that happens to be numbered 666. This was made before we got to it. Trying to deal with Manifest V3. Um, it's got like a lot, it's a pretty big thread. It's been going on for years now. You can see it's 2019. Um, again, I'm not going to get too deep into Manifest V3 specifics because it's just like depressing. We don't have to think about it that way. So I'm trying to think of this as an opportunity to rethink what we can do with Companion and how we interact, the, the, our users will interact with it in the browser. So we're trying to rethink this and we're saying like, what do we want IPFS Companion to do now? And how can we move some of these features around, um, take this as an opportunity to just redesign this. So 
what I think is that we should like basically just redirect and allow uploading. We want to keep it as minimal as possible, and then we want to be able to pull out other features into IPFS-enabled extensions, and we can continue to build on that. So to describe what an IPFS-enabled extension, like the intention of it would be, would be to provide value to the users with a shallow understanding of IPFS. So they don't really have to understand too much IPFS. They don't have to like dig into diagnostics. They don't have to really understand how much of this is working. Hopefully they just install something like Dietrich was talking about before, where I just want to pin something to Wiki like from Wikipedia to IPFS. I just want to pin a tweet. I want to pin a YouTube video and I want to stick it around. I want to make sure like I can access it forever. Um, without having to understand IPFS. So I believe this is like a gateway drug to people understanding IPFS. Um, so yeah, shared single functionality when possible, um, shared spec, so hopefully we can reuse code. It's just maybe a library that you could just include in your extension or a template. Um, it'll be interacting with Kubo or hopefully some of the new like HTTP um, specs that are going through that. Should be agnostic in that way. Um, and then I'm thinking it's very early. I want to get y'all's opinion on it, but maybe we can make them sort of composable. Maybe you can have some of these extensions working together. Uh, some examples of some of the ideas we have, like I just said, pin tweet to IPFS. Would like to see a, maybe a journaling one where you know you open, it, you click one click, you get a full page like content editable web page. You can type it and then just boom published straight to IPFS or Fleek, um, pin, web back, uh, pin playback, and then it's funny, uh, Mo was talking about the mutable pinning. I, I actually had this down. I don't know how the hell I would do it as an extension, but it's something I would like really like to have. So hopefully we can like work together on that and eventually get a spec going for that. Um, but yeah, so this is, again, very brief talk, but wanted to just get the conversation started, get your ideas and we'll see where we're going from there. I there's a HackMD right here. This is where I have like a big list of ideas. Um, please like add anything you can to there. I also have the, we're in browsers, browsers and platforms in the Filecoin Slack. I'll add some more information, links to all this stuff in the track Slack channel after this. Um, and then one more thing to cover is if you're wondering like where all this other information would go for like actual power users and other developers and things, I would like to make an extension IPFS toolbox. So basically this would have maybe in like a dev tools uh, panel, CID Explorer, IPLD Explorer, if it works, um, actually being able to get into that, inspecting XIPFS path, DNS link, there's tons of stuff we can do here. Um, I talked to Russell the other day at the beginning of this week about the web UI and diagnostics view. I think that like we can definitely collaborate on that. I think there's a whole lot to be shared here. Um, but yeah, additionally, if you have more developer experience things, let's just like cram it all into here. <laughs> so that's my ideas. Um, yeah, do we have any questions? Sorry, I kind of blew through all this pretty fast. Yeah, so just a quick question, and, and I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but um, for the composability of the extensions, how do you, do you have like a high level idea of how that would work and maybe how we could compose the extensions eventually into web UI while also having them be distinct separate components? I, I don't have an answer to that yet. Um, this is like a very, the composable part was like a, like I literally just added that this morning. I was like, this would be really cool. Um, but basically I want to be able to just, I, I, I want to like, I was thinking when composable, I'm saying like maybe an extension can modify something like use web recorder, which we're going to hear about next, um, to pull in a tweet and then maybe you want to modify that or duplicate it or something. So maybe another extension can do that and then pin that also. So I don't know if that's like, passing a CID, copying it to your clipboard, and then passing it over, like the same way that you'd like pipe things in Unix. That's like, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking about for that. Um, but as far as like what you're talking about, I was kind of thinking of architecting this like a first, like a template. So once we get companion to like the slimmest possible, just speaking to the, you know, RPC, um, hopefully not RPC soon. Um, then I would make a template of that, and then you could just start from that for those. So that's like the composability on that sense, yeah. 
Um, which browsers are you supporting with this new version of Companion? Or are there like specific ones like Opera or Firefox that you're targeting? Totally, that's a good question. Um, so with Manifest V3, they like so Chrome is the only one I think right now that's really pushing um, the blocking of the web request. Like they 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 were trying to get everyone to do that, but Firefox is not doing it now. I think Brave's not going to do it now. Um, and for some of the workarounds we had to do for Chrome, uh, like with Manifest V3, don't work in Firefox. So I'm going to have to kind of support both. Um, I'm hopefully I'll be able to do some like feature detection or like browser detection in there so I don't have to like actually generate separate extensions for these. Um, but yeah, definitely like Chrome and Firefox first, Brave. Um, Brave already has their built-in thing. We have like a weekly meeting with them so I'll be like communicating them with them more and hopefully we can um, sync up on that and continue to discover like try and discover more of these like user interactions because that's really what it's about. Like Companion is it, it exists as it does now and it works. And we have like a version with the Manifest for 3 that like has the bare minimum stuff working. So I think the interesting part is, yeah, trying to see where we can get these like other users to just directly use these things, you know. Cool, thank you. Brad, thanks David.